Hello, this is Andy from SwissAAA.org. Welcome to the Swiss AAA Online Academy. In this episode, we're going to look at all the other equipment except the pistol that you're going to need. Of course, there's a lot of different holsters and caps and belts and neck pouches and shirts and trousers and so on. So I'm going to focus on what I think is a suitable solution in each one of these categories for IDPA sports shooting. First topic, ear protection. And the question you need to answer for yourself is, do I just want to have ear plugs or do I want to have ear muffs that cover the whole ear? My recommendation, go for these. It's a better protection of your ears, especially if you're indoors. And uh, so I use those. If you have decided, okay, it's ear muffs, then is it passive like these? or active, meaning they have batteries in and loudspeakers and microphones and then they're gonna, you know, modulate the, the, the sound and 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 so you in theory can hear other guys speaking and while it's actually protecting you from the gunfire sound. My experience with active earmuffs, something always breaks be it the cover of the microphone, be it the batteries are dead, be it something else. And they cost a lot more than just simple passive ones. So I forgot about all the active stuff. I have the quality passive ones, very cost effective and they protect me very well. So that's my recommendation. Of course, you do your own decision, but consider these points. Next point to consider is the eye protection. All right, so what kind of uh, glasses you choose is a bit dependent whether you have ear plugs or ear muffs. Because the first thing is if you have ear muffs, your temples here need to be really close to your uh, head. They can't like, you know, make a curve here and then leave uh, a, a, an opening for the sound to actually enter. So that's something to consider. So these, for example, are very tight to my head and the ear muffs can close completely and it's uh, no problem at all. Second point you need to consider is what kind of color you want on your, uh, on your glass. So I use now clear color because uh, and then it's better for the video, but for shooting actually, I use a, a darker uh, lens. So now these are red ones for in, in the sun. It actually protects from the glare and it also provides a better contrast in, in, in uh, high intensity light. And in low light conditions or indoor, I go for yellow ones. So they give more contrast and they also protect from the glare of, of light. Also good for driving uh, in, the, in the night, for example. So I recommend go for glasses where you have interchangeable lenses, clear, darkish and yellow. So that's what I use and I have been using it for years and it works really well. Next point is the holster for the gun. So there's a lot of options. I'm going to tell you what I use and what works well for me. And of course, in the context again of IDPA sports shooting, there are regulations in IDPA, what kind of holster you can use. It needs to be a strong side belt holster and so on and so forth. Read that in the rules. So, some other points you need to consider. It needs to be really safe. So the trigger needs to be covered. It needs to hold your gun safely. But for sports shooting, I don't recommend an active retention holster. So active or passive retention it means that it actually holds the gun. But if I draw enough, the gun actually comes out. So I don't need to deactivate any holster safety on it. For real carry, I recommend an 
a, a, an active retention holster where you have to deactivate the safety, but that's not the topic here. Okay, so it needs to hold it, maybe adjustable screws enough so it doesn't fall out by itself, right? I also recommend for sports use a straight up draw. So let me check. So I draw the pistol straight up, not at an angle. Forward is not allowed anyway in IDPA, backwards I don't recommend. So I recommend go straight up in your draw and then you can go on target. So look out for that. Then uh, it needs to have, there's a regulated distance it can have when the gun is in the holster from the body, but you need to be able to, um, uh, as you grab the pistol, to finish your grip on the pistol as much as possible. So if I grab the pistol and I draw, I don't need to change my hand, my grip on the pistol anymore. I don't need to re-grip it. Right, so that's something to check. If it's very close, it's very difficult to actually do that. Next point is going to be the belt attachment of the holster. Belt attachment. There's many types of belt attachment. Most commonly you see like paddle holsters that you can just tuck in. Problem with that is if you draw, they might come the gun might come with the holster. Of course, they say it never happens, but why take the risk? Then there's such that you have a, a, a flap here where you can open and close it. They tend to just break. I, for, that reason, for those reasons, just have a, a fixed belt attachment and I need to actually open the belt, obviously, stick it in, and uh, put the holster where it belongs, close the belt, and that's it. And it can't go off and it can't move very well if the belt whiz and the whiz of, the, of your uh, uh, belt attachment actually fits well. So that's what I recommend. Fixed attachment with the right whiz to go with your belt, and that's it. Mag pouches. In IDPA, depending on the division, you have either two or three spare mags on your weak hand side. So, what to look out for when you choose mag pouches? One thing, they should not be covering too much of your mag. The rules say two inches, approximately five centimeters. So, don't go for more because then you if it's covering too much, you cannot grab the magazines well. So these are shorty mags, 15 rounds. So I still can grab it pretty well, right? Watch out for that. Then next thing, if you do a double mag pouch, look at the distance that the mags have from each other so that if you grab the front one, you're not interfering with the, with the rear one, right? So these, for example, are almost a bit too narrow. So for competition use, I would actually prefer them to be a bit further apart from each other. Then next thing to watch out is the distance from the body. Also here, these are very close. So you could be a bit further away. It's uh, regulated in the rules, but uh, watch out for the, the further away, the easier to grab, of course. And the last point is the belt attachment. There, it's the same criteria like for the holster for the pistol. I like a fixed belt attachment with the correct uh, width for the belt, and that's it. I have to take off the belt and put it on, I don't care. But they stay where they should be, and there's no way this thing comes off. Belt. What kind of belt should you use? So the main consideration is it needs to provide a sturdy platform for your holster and for your mag pouches. You don't want these to move around more than absolutely necessary. Sturdy platform. Width of the belt. Maximum width is 1.75 inch or 4.5 centimeters. That's allowed in IDPA. 
So I would go with the maximum width, the wider, the sturdier the platform. Then, last point, it should be easy to go in and out of your pant loops because you need to take the holster and the mag pouches on and off all the time if you wash your trousers the latest. So that's, that, those are the points. Sturdy platform, maximum width, 4.5 centimeters, and easy to get in and out of your trousers. What kind of trousers to wear? In IDPA, we have something called the retention mag change or the tactical mag change. So it basically involves retaining the mag that you take out of the gum. So for me, the fastest way to do this is to actually stow the mag in the pocket of the trouser, not in the concealment, in the trouser. So your trouser needs to have pockets like these that actually accommodate this move. So if I have a mag coming out of the gun, I can easily stow it here and go to the next one to, uh, to do such a tactical or retention mag change. So look at the, at the pockets of your trousers if you want to do retention mag changes. Next point to consider, you need to be able to move. You need to be able to go on your knees. You need to, go, uh, to be able to squat. You need to be able to go on the ground and so on and so forth. So it needs to be to provide ample possibility to actually move around. And the last point I recommend is have a possibility to put pads in, into your knees. So if you have to go on the ground, one knee down, two knee downs, your knees are protected. It's much more comfortable to do it that way. In IDPA, the protection needs to be inside, so not visible. So here I don't have them in now, but there's pockets in here where you can put a, a knee protection in and you can wear it all day, it's not a problem. So those are the points to consider with the trouser, pockets for retention mag change, movement, ability to move within the also with the trousers, and potentially uh, a possibility to add knee protection on visible in the trousers. That's it. Concealment. In IDPA, most of the stages will require you to wear a concealment garment. So concealing your equipment, the pistol and the, and the max. If you stretch out the arms uh, parallel to the ground, nothing should be visible from 360 degrees, which of course is the case. So most guys choose a vest. You can have a shirt or whatever covering it. But the vest is quite cool because it doesn't lift when I lift my arms. It's sturdy enough that I can actually do a, a grab on the pistol. It doesn't flap around in the wind too much. And uh, I can access my gear uh, very well. So I recommend a vest. doesn't have to be too heavy, but uh, it needs to be a quite a sturdy material so I can easily go on my equipment, whatever I need to do. This type of vest, for me, I've used it for years. That's the ideal thing to wear for IDPA sports shooting concealment. Shirt. So make sure your shirt is reasonably tight on your body and tucked into the trousers, right? Might, uh, now in my case, uh, uh, you know, stress a little bit the too much belly that I have. But anyway, it's not about that. It's about not having the shirt interfere with you grabbing the gun, grabbing the mags, or holstering a loaded gun, for example. Because if parts of your shirt get in between trigger and holster, the gun is going to fire if it's striker fire. So you need to be clear, tucked in, reasonably tight to your body. That's it. Just wear a t-shirt according to the climate, of course, but that's what I recommend. Reasonably tight clothing that doesn't interfere with your equipment in any way. Shoes. What kind of shoes are you supposed to wear? 
So I use these kind of shoes, it's like running shoes, reasonably good uh, uh, grip on the ground, very good uh, uh, grip on your foot and uh, comfortable to wear. That's about what I would recommend for IDPA sports shooting. Last point on the equipment, the cap. I wear a cap outside and indoors as well because outdoors obviously protects me from the sun, maybe even from a light rain. And indoors it also protects me if I wear it from flying uh, brass to actually get into my face or even get between my eyes and my glasses, right? So I always wear the cap. Only thing you have to be uh, attentive to is if you go prone, the cap might actually hinder your uh, side picture. So a uh, little bit calculate that. Otherwise, I always wear a cap for shooting. So that was some points on the equipment you use for IDPA sports shooting. There's many pros and cons, many possibilities. I just showed you what I use and what I use pretty successfully for my uh, uh, abilities and possibilities. Please consider these points. Check out what you buy, buy once, buy quality and be happy with it. Please visit the Swiss AAA Online Academy for more firearms education contents. Contact us with any questions and remarks. And thank you for watching.